Hey gang, welcome back to another Electronics and More video. I received a call from a very good friend of mine telling me that his AC system wasn't working, that the compressor every morning or every other morning he would have to turn the breaker on to reset it. It was tripping the breaker every time the compressor would start up. And right now the unit is not cooling at all. All you hear is the cooling fan going on the unit. So what I'm going to do in this video is troubleshoot this unit right here. The power supply is in that breaker panel right over there. So first, I'm going to remove this panel and make sure the voltage is sufficient to rule out that as being a problem, why the compressor is drawing too much current. Okay, first thing, I'm going to check the incoming AC voltage. And we're looking pretty good. Each leg around 121.3 volts. So I know there's sufficient power going to the unit. It's not a low voltage problem. Now the next thing I'm going to do, because the compressor, every so often I hear it try and come on, that's an indication to me that the compressor may be stuck. Now this is a seven year old unit. Up until about a month ago, there was no problems. And then what happened, every morning when this system would turn on, it would trip the breaker. And usually when that happens, that's an indication of excessive current being drawn by the compressor. So I want to find out why the compressor is drawing extra current. So what I'm going to do is take a closer look at the compressor and the connections. I'm also going to check this capacitor to make sure. And you just heard it hum. It came on and it clicked off. It overloaded. And that's an indication the compressor is sticking. I'm going to check the value of this capacitor to make sure that the value is what it's supposed to be. If the value is what it's supposed to be and the compressor terminals look good, there's no corrosion, everything's nice and tight. What I'm going to end up doing is installing a hard start kit. What a hard start kit is, is another capacitor in parallel with this one right here. And it's only going to be used when the compressor starts up to give it the extra starting torque to get that current down a little bit when it goes to start. And once it starts up, it's removed from the circuit and only this capacitor is left in. So let me turn the power off and take a closer look at a few of these things. Okay, with the power disconnected from this condensing unit, the first thing I want to do is identify the common terminal. This is a dual capacitor. One side of it's used for the fan on top and the other side is used for the compressor. So I want to identify the one that says H-E-R-M, which stands for Hermetically Sealed Compressor, and the terminal that says common. Take my capacitor discharge tool. This is nothing more than a 10 watt, or actually 11 watt, 20 K ohm resistor. You take one end, touch it to chassis ground, and then you're gonna to touch it to each one of the terminals for a few seconds. Go to each one. each one of them and then once that's done I'm going to go between the terminals okay let's go between these terminals and then I'm going to short the terminals to make sure it's totally no charge at all all right so I just lifted the red one up, but let's go between both. Good. So now I know it's safe to touch. Now I'm going to push this back down. Now that this has been completely discharged, what I'm going to do is remove the capacitor from the unit because I want to see what the ratings are on the capacitor. And then I can show you on top what the markings are, compressor, common, and fan. So the red right here, pull that out, and the purple go on the common. The brown goes to the fan. And pull it off. There we go. And then we have the yellow that goes to the compressor. So let me undo that and remove this from the unit. Okay, this is the capacitor out of the machine. Right here you can see it says fan. Right there it says H-E-R-M. That's the compressor. And over here is a, looks like a letter C. It's hard to see. And that's your common. So I want to test the compressor between here, the common, and Herm, and I want to check the fan and make sure the readings match exactly or very close to 70 microfarads for the compressor and 5 microfarads for the fan. 
If the readings don't match, that's going to explain why the compressor is not starting up. And it's also going to explain why the compressor has been having a lot harder time starting in the morning, resulting in the breaker tripping. So let's check this out. If it is the problem, we're going to end up swapping this out, and then the compressor should come right on. So let's take a look at the readings on this. Okay, digital multimeter is on the microfarad setting. I'm now going to check the capacitor between the common and the fan first. Let's see what kind of a reading we get if it's close to 5. Uh, that's a little lower than 5. That's about 20% off. Alright, so that's probably okay for the fan, but still not good. Now let's go between the common and the compressor terminal, and let's see what that one is. Wow. That is not good, baby. We got 0.125 microfarad, and that's supposed to be coming in right around 70. So let's try that again. Yep, this is looking like the problem why the compressor is not starting up. Okay, let me put in another one, and let's give it a try. Okay, right here's the new capacitor. Went and picked this up. Now, over the past two months, like I said, it was tripping intermittently when the unit would start up. So that was a sign that the capacitance on this side of this capacitor was getting more and more open until the point where it was so low that the compressor would no longer start. Now if you don't have a digital meter that measures capacitance to give you a really accurate reading of the capacitor, then what you could do is you could put this to a low range first. So I go over here, there's ohms, let me select the range, select the low one right there. And you want to go between the terminals. You should not get any reading. If this gives you a reading on the lowest range, that's going to indicate that the capacitor shorted. And you want to check between the common and the compressor terminal and the common and the fan. Once that's done, you're going to switch to the highest range, which is going to be mega ohm. Right there. Check between each terminal right here. and the CAN body and you should have no movement on that meter if you do you're going to have to replace the capacitor okay let me reinstall this in the unit and let's see if it corrects the problem hopefully it does if it doesn't then I'm going to have to show you what to do next now let's lift it up there we go let's go up right there can't go too high otherwise I think the wire was yeah these are short so let's go Let's try right here. Tighten that down securely. Okay. Now I know why this cardboard was here. Yep. To keep it away from the contactor. Alright, so the yellow goes to the compressor. Good. And the brown over here goes to the green, which is the fan. A little bit more of that. And actually, I don't know why they didn't, but they pulled a little bit more wire out of this bunch. Oh, I see. This red one's too short. All right. Whatever idiot did this, put a short red wire in. Because this should have been longer, and then this would have been higher, but it's been like that for seven years. It should be fine. Push it here. And let's take this red one, clip it right. Let's do it this way, it's probably better that way. That's on tight, make sure this one's on. Let's push this down just a hair more. That's got play, it's not rubbing against the can. Okay. Now that the capacitor is in, if you notice right over here, this wire is not in good condition. So I'm going to pull off the yellow one, and this one's been overheated. So I'm going to pop that one out, clean it, probably throw a new connector on the end, and put it back together. And right here is the old connector that I cut off. Not in good shape, overheated. 
Okay, here's the new end. Very nice. I cleaned the blade with a screwdriver, scraped it nice and clean. Let me slide this back on. Alright, that's a very nice connection now. Okay, let me power this back up, turn on the system, and see if it works. Now 240 volts at the condensing unit. Going to go inside and turn on the system. And we are back in action. Now the homeowner knew absolutely nothing about AC systems, called up a dishonest repairman. He could have very easily told you that your compressor was faulty and talked you into purchasing a whole new condensing unit. That's why you need to know how to test these things. Now if this did not make the compressor turn on, then I would have left this in place. I would have lifted this off the top and disconnected the wires to the condenser fan take all the power off of the fan, and when I turn on the power to the unit, I'd be hitting the top of the compressor with a rubber mallet, trying to free it up. And usually that does the trick, but if your compressor starts to stick like that, then you're gonna wanna make sure the value of the capacitor is good, make sure all the terminals are very good, they're not burned up and corroded like the one I just replaced here. Be sure to check the ones on the compressor itself. And if everything looks good, you're definitely going to want to add a hard start kit. All it is is another capacitor that's going to be connected in parallel with the common and the HERM terminal. It's going to be in circuit only momentarily when the compressor starts up to give it more starting torque. And then it's going to be removed from the circuit, leaving only that run capacitor powered up. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.